What's up, everybody? Yo, 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 yo. Brush my hair real quick. There we go. There we go. All spiffed up. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Friday, live Q&A. Every Friday on YouTube, we drop these live Q&As for you to answer your questions. So if you show up on Friday, you can ask your questions live, and I will do my best to answer each and every one as I rant around the world of health, fitness, mixed martial arts, and anything else you guys want to hear about. This is an open, this is an open and live discussion for us. The push-up Sit up or the push up body weight squat, body weight squat count is up to 18. I'm frozen at 18. I have not um, um, messed up in almost a week now. So I'm at 18 push ups and 18 body weight squats. I have one push up and one body weight squat for every time I curse public publicly. I use profanity over this social media, YouTube type of world. I'm trying not to do that anymore. I'm cleaning up my potty mouth. So I can feel better about the information that I put out, allowing a wider range of people to listen, primarily children, families, because this information is available or should be available to every human. And it's not fair that Uncle Mike with the potty mouth drops the F-bomb more than is, is necessary and uh, people can't listen. So I've put that task upon myself to make sure I'm, I'm staying accountable and I'll drop a video at the end of every month. Um, I thought it was going to be like 500 um, push-ups and body weight squats. I was kind of excited for that, but 18, I do more than that every day anyway. So we'll see what happens. Let's try and answer some questions for you guys. Milan says, what do you think of the new UFC belt design? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's cool, right? I don't know. I like the old, old, old one a little bit better, I think, but I've never actually seen this one in person. I haven't held it yet. Um, I've, I've seen the the original in person many times. I've held it. I've carried it. I've, um, you know, done the whole deal because I work with athletes that had it, you know, and, and work with athletes that went out and won them um, at that time. So saw the fresh, clean and shiny one um, and all that fun stuff. And this one I haven't seen yet. It looks a little futuristic to me, but it's cool. It's change is good. Gary Hall. Hell yeah, Mike Dolce. What's up, Gary? Milan, I like the older style better in my opinion. Well, there we go. Great minds, Milan. Um, Elijah, is the microwave bad to use? It's not optimal. Let's put it that way because I'm, I'm not trying to, to stir up the debate and the, the drama like, like 2018 was. Speaking your mind gets a lot of people triggered, gets a lot of people feelings hurt, right? Whether or not what you're saying is correct gets a lot of people's feelings hurt. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to speak in a manner that is more engaging for the population. So hopefully people don't get their feelings hurt when a fact comes out that is contrary to what they're hoping is true or they thought was true and then they're faced with new information, maybe, um, or maybe it's a refusal to accept information that's in, in the, the, the public spare or, uh, square, which it is. Um, so what we're going to say is there's better ways, there's tastier ways, there's more efficient ways, there's less expensive ways. And when we talk about the microwave, a lot of times, like, I don't, I don't have a microwave where I am right now. I don't miss a meal. All right, my food is cooked. I cooked my food already. I cooked it on the in the oven, on the stove, on the grill, um, in the boiling pot, or it's fresh. I don't need to to cook it again. Um, I just eat it, eat it hot, eat it cold, eat it warm, eat it room temperature. Here's a little tip: just take your meal and put it on the table. If it's cold in a cooler, put it on your table like an hour before you're supposed to eat. So it's like room temperature. It's basically the way your food the temperature of your food when it sits on your plate at a meal anyway goes from kind of being hot on the stove to getting to your plate to being kind of hottish warm to be in like room temperature by the time you're done i don't understand what the big deal is on that um sidekick thank god it's friday coach daily harper daily what's up young lady how are you where are you exciting the exciting life of daily harper um daily lane harper excuse me um, good to see you, Coach Coach Daily Lane Harper, a Dolce Dot certified coach, among many other um, educational um, pursuits and accreditations in, in her own right. Very, uh, um, very honest practitioner of of health and wellness and the evolution it believes. You're living the lifestyle 
um, that could be uh, akin to a martial arts lifestyle. Um, the pursuit of just healthier, fitter, more evolved. And that's, that's what it seems through all your stuff daily. So good to see you on here. Shane, I made it love hearing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shane, I love hearing the wisdom share in these live videos. Well, right on. Well, if it's not wisdom, it's it's probably just a bunch of, of horse pokey, but at least it's entertaining horse pokey, right? So at least you'll stay long enough to get another um, piece of honesty. Which is more valuable, veggies or fruit? Uh, there is no either or. There's no best exercise. There's no best food. There's no you know either or. They're all good. And that's why we discuss a diet, the, Dol the Dolce diet principles, quite simply, we eat earth grown nutrients in wide variety, as local, as organic, as, as non modified, as non polluted, as, as, you know, as, as little of man's corporate greed and systemizations and, and, you know, marketing campaigns built around, we, we want to get away from that. So we, when we say earth grown nutrients, we don't mean a, like a USDA um, organic logo, though there might be one and that might be awesome. We mean organic in the true sense of the word, naturally grown the way nature intended, the way the planet had intended and, and allows for such life cycles. That's what we talk about. And a lot of people, they get so trigger, triggered, Dolce, the organic logo is, is all government smoke and mirrors and conspiracies and tinfoil white hats. And it might be, that's fine. But it's not a bad thing to have that, but that's not all that matters. The, what matters is outside of that. I know people that, that grow farms. I grow some, some, some produce um, that would be considered USDA organic way better than that, way better than that because it was naturally grown in an organic manner. That's what we talk about. So when I'm, answer, I'm still answering your, your, your veggie or fruit question, but I think context matters. Context matters. Context matters with all of this. And people, they don't understand the context. So fruits are extremely valuable. Veggies are extremely valuable. In my opinion, certain wild-caught meats are extremely valuable. Like, this is extremely valuable based upon the context of, of who we're talking to, what the question is, what the, the time in the geographic location. Like, there's so many details that go into a more descript answer. But yeah, they all matter. It all matters. It all matters. And that's why we say number one, our number one principle at the, the Dolce diet is to eat earth-grown nutrients, only earth-grown nutrients, only real food. And people can argue based upon the synthetic chemicals that are in food and, and, you know, what can be toxic up to a certain level. So it's generally recognized as safe as long as you don't eat a little more than we're saying. I mean, this is what they talk about when all these synthetic chemicals out there. So we say, let's, let's, let's use earth grow nutrients as our, our primary, our only food source, because everything else is synthetic foods in our, in our opinion. And it's hard to, I mean, you can argue based upon semantics and many of the fitness professionals do argue this topic based upon the semantics, like they're trying to win a, a high school debate, but that's not what it's about. Because again, we're back to context. It's all in context. In context, earth grow nutrients, real food, the same food that has sustained all life on this planet since the dawn of time. In context, that is a much more valuable, prove it nutrient source than all the synthetic chemicals these corporations are making for profit. Can we at least agree on that? So if we accept that to be true and we can agree on that, then contextually now we can have a conversation. When we say... It's better for most a Centrum bottle or whatever well-qualified brand might be producing a lycopene or a ubiquinol or a vitamin D3 or a EAA, a central amino acid, or whatever it is. If we can get it from number one, the earth-grown source, well, that's ideal, right? Also, what will happen is we'll maximize our micronutrient intake, our phytonutrient intake at a lower total caloric floor because earth grown nutrients tend to be much more nutritionally dense per calorie than much of the synthetic foods are, that are out there with all the extra chemicals for synthetic chemicals, carbon, Dolce, um, 
because all the extra synthetic chemicals there to like stabilize the product and to allow it to be more puffy or fluffy or, you know, whisk moisture away or sustain the shelf life or give it a certain shine or hue or glow or protective properties to offer a, a palatable experience, to offer a palatable experience that may warrant repeat craves for it, signals to be sent to crave it, to eat more of it, um, to not be satiated, though, in, in, in a hypercaloric uh, state or intake. All that goes into a lot of the synthetic foods. That doesn't go into the earth-grown foods. You eat an apple. You're pretty good. I can eat, eat an apple and not be hungry anymore. Not for like a half hour to, to a couple hours if I eat an apple. Rarely do I eat two, but sometimes if I'm really starving, I'll eat two apples. I could tear through a box of donuts or a, a, a pizza. You tear through that, eat the whole thing, and still kind of be like my stomach's all full and distended, but I'm still mentally, I'm kind of full. I still need to eat something. I need to eat something, right? That's that, that's the synthetic chemical side. So contextually, contextually, if we're eating real food as our number one primary nutrition source, all of the other stuff just kind of fades away. And that's where the whole, the keto and the carnivore and the intermittent fasting and the zone and, and the paleo and the um, all the other, you know, the hodgepodge of dogmatic nutrition philosophy, when all that kind of comes into the sphere, then it becomes a, a debate, a high school debate team. But there's no context. And I try and live, our team tries and live, where we work, we work within context. We work with the 38-year-old mother of three kids, one natural, two cesarean, um, added 40 pounds or, or incurred some sort of uh, anemic issue or thyroid issue or hormonal issue. Uh, maybe the busyness caused a, a, a stress anxiety um, state and they do or they do not exercise. Some do, some don't. Some resist in some yoga, um, some work, some, you know, outside the home, some stay inside the home. That's the con context. We drill deeper. They, they live in Washington state or they live in South Florida. Contextually, you need to really drill down and then make informed suggestions or, or selections on nutrition for you. I'm going really long on this because I think it's valuable for those who are still here and, and still listening. And, and I think this offers much insight into what we do in our nutrition philosophy. A lot of people, they, they, they try and sell their diet plan. And then they say, well, Dolce is just trying to sell his diet plan by saying that you don't really need to follow a diet plan. You just need to follow these general principles. That's pretty much what we say. And yes, we have some products and services for those who want them. I'm here talking to you guys for free and I have so much free content out there. And it's just, I'm telling you, use your brain and you don't need to buy anything really from anybody. So this is not a sales pitch here. It, it's quite the opposite. I'm trying to sell you on the education. I'm just structuring your life in a way that you eat real food in wide variety with, you know, great rotation and 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 in moderation which means i don't only eat chicken and asparagus and and white rice and oats and egg whites i don't only eat that i eat chicken and salmon and elk and venison and turkey and hen and black beans and hemp's and and hemp's and chickpeas and quinoa all as my my general protein sources eggs and they all fit into that um i take berries and melon and grains and seeds um into my life without banning any for no reason and beans and legumes and and you know a wide variety of of these earth-grown ingredients but not so much that we're building um let's say toxicity or allergies to really any of these people are like well dolce kale kale, you know, brown rice will, will make you sick. The body can't digest it and yada, yada, yada. But then they'll go and, 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 you know, eat pop tarts and drink, you know, aspartame and, and whatever else without even thinking, well, that's generally recognized as safe. They say, 
The FDA said that sucralose is generally recognized as safe up until a certain level. Therefore, it's safe. Therefore, it's healthy. Therefore, it's better than raw local honey. Contextually, that's wrong. That's our belief. Now, you can go and believe whatever you want. I'm not mad at you. I just disagree with you. And I'm going to keep speaking from my perspective of what actually works. And I'll close this question because I know I got tons and tons more. I'll close my question with this. The best nutrition practice for you, no matter who you are or where you are, is to eat a diet of earth-grown nutrients as ripe as local, as in season, as organic, as naturally grown as possible, unmolested by man's greedy little fingers and storms length transactions and, and, you know, monetization of ingredient subgroups. We want to get away from that. And we just want to walk out in our backyard and pull a, a fish from a stream and an apple from a tree and a, a, a potato from the ground and a, and a you know, almond, um, you know, off the, the tree um, and eat like that. And that's that's the crazy thing, because as and I'm getting long on this now, but I deal with it all the time and people get so crazy like that's bad, like that's bad. But what's good is, is, you know, eating these protein bars because it's a zero carbohydrate protein bar with 27 grams of fiber from or 27 grams of, of, of protein from an isolate, from a concentrate and from a, a, a egg or a beef or whatever type of protein. And they'll go on and on about that. That's bogus, man. That makes no sense. That just I just can't wrap my head around that. And then they're talking, but they're talking about nutrition, right? No, that's that's real food, contextually, right? They're the same food that has sustained all of life on this planet since the dawn of time. That's kind of that's that's real food. What they're making now, it's 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 synthetic food. It's not real food. It's synthetic food. And there might be a time and place for a niche percentage of the population, a niche percentage of the time. There might be a, a time and place for that, right? There's there's almost no absolutes. But for most of the people, most of the time, you would be most successful following a diet of earth-grown nutrients, of real food, eaten in wide variety, as local, as fresh, as organic as possible. A wide variety. So we're getting all the possible benefits Without really coming near, you know, toxicities, which is pretty hard, it's pretty rare for almost all food groups, but for some people, a niche percentage, there can be some concern, so be careful. And, you know, the, the, the wide variety of food, as fresh and local and, and vibrant as, as possible, that, that's the ideal way. So I'm going to get off that topic. That's the answer to your question, um, question like number two of this this. 18 minute show so far um veggies or fruit i think you got the answer me neither i'm not going to answer that question um i think i've answered it enough time um alf graham but i appreciate you alf graham what's up man brandon welcome i appreciate the door what's the best way to straighten or align and oh, your frame and body conscious effort conscious effort my friend there's that's an ever and never-ending process we work on it constantly i i had um erwin lacour of MoveNet. Um, who just came out with a, uh, his new book, The Practice of Natural Movement. I had him on the podcast, interviewed him last night. That'll be up on Monday. A great conversation about just this. He never, I'm talking to him. He moves to eight different positions in the 60 or so minutes that we were speaking. I'm sitting in this damn chair like this, hooked to the microphone. I got to change this setup. And I'm just trying to fo focus as he's talking. I'm feeling really self-conscious, trying to focus on my, my own structural alignment. Um, do, 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 do. sorry guys, questions. Omar, if I were to eat cheese, milk, or Greek yogurt, when would be the best time to eat it? Preparing for what or refueling after what? So if I were to eat cheese, milk, or Greek yogurt, when would be the best time to eat it as it fits a recipe? If you're going to have a little cheese, a little milk, or a little Greek yogurt, that's as it fits um, your, your lifestyle as it fits your situation. There's no real best time, but we're not going crazy. We don't typically go crazy with the dairy, um, grass fed butter or ghee. Uh, we have a, a, you know, a tablespoon or, or four of those per day. Um, Greek yogurt, you know, I'll have a few ounces a week, um, typically, but you know, if you're having a, I wouldn't eat it every day. Um, 
just because there seems to be some digestive and most of the people um, that, that we come in contact with, if they have yogurt every day. They start to get like, like mud gut. They just kind of feel a little off. Like it's not quite digesting perfectly and it slows some other things down, but a few ounces every couple of days or so. I think that's, that's great. That, that seems to work well with many, many people, even those who kind of have some uh, are a little more sensitive. Robin, do you think intermittent fasting is good for contest prep to lose weight faster? It's good to lose weight, but what type of weight when you're getting ready for a contest prep, your job is to keep as much muscle tissue as possible. You've worked all year. You've worked all year to build this muscle tissue, to create these shapes and curves or athletic attributes of this musculature. You have to fight for every gram, for every ounce of lean muscle tissue, of functional muscle tissue. You don't want to lose any. So intermittent fasting makes it much more challenging to maintain that muscle tissue because intermittent fasting by the nature of the system is reducing the time with which you can eat meals. And some, some people take intermittent fasting to be extreme where it's, let's, it's a multi-day fast or it's a water fast, or it's, it's a single day, one meal per day fast, or it's a four hour fueling um, window, 20 hour fasting or six or eight or 10. It doesn't see many people consider any less than 10 hours intermittent fasting. If you know, 10, 11, 12 hours, that's just kind of, you know, normal lifestyle for most people. So it's like inside the 10 hours really becomes the intermittent fasting. And there's, different schools of thought or different, you know, people, different styles of fasting. So it's, I'm kind of talking to the whole audience, but you said contest prep. It becomes very difficult. Will you get ripped? Yeah, probably. Will you lean out? Yeah, probably. Will you, um, um, reduce total body weight on the scale? Yeah, probably. Will you look better? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I could see it going a lot of different ways. Will you be a, a better performing athlete? Eh, will you be faster? Uh, will your power to KG ratio improve? Uh, if you're just fasting, that's hard. Um, especially, and it seems in most athletes that cut weight or lose weight to perform, bodybuilders included, they do better on a multi-meal per day eating system, generally. The vast majority of people, the vast majority of time have, you know, the vast majority of, of positive results by eating more often. Most bros, most bodybuilders, four to six times per day seems to be ideal. Most athletes, mixed martial artists, wrestlers, four to six times a day seems pretty good. Um, most of the high level competitors who are, are getting contest prep, that's what I'm assuming you mean. That's the terminology. It's very difficult. To do that. And then I could break down different, you know, macro styles, but I, I think that's a much longer conversation because then I would need context. Milan, wow, you're the only person to read my name properly. That Dolce mind. Well, I appreciate that. I actually care. I, I, try. I, I try. I try. I saw that and I was like, Milan. I don't wonder how other people say it. David B. Cab cannabis is legal in Canada. I'm thinking about using it to relax and recover and thinking about cutting out alcohol thoughts. Well, David. This is not medical advice, right? So you're your own person, do your own thing. My personal opinion, if I was in your shoes, I would 100% take full advantage of legal cannabis in Canada and get alcohol out of my life completely. Not much good comes from alcohol. And dare I say, no good comes from alcohol. We could go back to the high school debate team and, and debate finer points. But cutting out alcohol, you got a pretty awesome, healthy life as compared to a life with alcohol and nothing else is different. Cannabis, THC, CBDs, and there's a whole array of, of the, the cannabis culture for medicinal properties. And there's lots of good, strong, relevant data, peer reviewed data in the world on that. And I certainly suggest you go and, and take a look and, and go down the rabbit hole on your own. Something certainly to look into. I would, if I was in that type of that position in a legal place in Canada, I would. Shane Twafra, my mother-in-law and I are now doing three weeks to shred it. She weighs herself in the morning at 131 and at night she's 134. Why is that? Should she be doing more cardio or weightlifting? Shane, no, I swing 10 pounds in a given day from what I wake up to, to what I kind of go to bed or I peek out at. That's from all the, the food and the fluid. She's on three weeks to shred it. She's eating a lot of food. 
She's eating probably more food than she's been accustomed to, and she's hopefully drinking more fluids, more water than she has been accustomed to. That's awesome. That is healthy. She's going to bed, then she's waking up three pounds lighter the next morning. Her body's working the way it should, and hopefully and likely every time she steps on the scale, one. 34, 133.8, 133.2, 128.6, you know, on the way down, on the way down. Um, that's completely normal. That's awesome. Good for you guys. Mamed, hey, coach, last time you told me to send an email about paying problem uh, we have in Iran. No, uh, we're actually looking into that. That's actually challenging. We've had a few of those notes. Um, Iran. Where was the other one? So there are a few places around the world, a few nations around the world that it's difficult to transact with. Um, so we're available globally, worldwide in all forms of, of pay, whether it be um, Apple Pay or PayPal or Braintree um, or Stripe or Visa, MasterCard, Discover, all the, the basic stuff. Um, we, we just... We're happy to take your money. Um, but some countries, they don't allow because of politics or, you know, whatever the, the situation is specifically that I don't personally know that the deep um, protocols, you know, it's not like a customs thing. It, it's you're just not allowed to transact uh, very simply. Um, so we we have we do take Bitcoin. Maybe that's something that could be helpful. Uh, we don't really promote it, but we have a link on our site, on our shop um, for that. But we're looking in deeper to see if there's any of the services, and we're speaking with some of our partners at the, the larger um, pay processors to get a better understanding of how we can tra transact in these other areas. So what I would say, um, my friend um, Ali, for now, is keep asking me whatever questions you have specifically. I'll do my best to help kind of keep you dialed into the best that I can. And then once we figure out a way to you know accept payment, um, then the, the the door's wide open. But, you know, Amazon, Kindle, Barnes & Noble, Nook, a lot of our content's on there. You know, you have access to our podcast and obviously to YouTube. So this is still content. This is great content. I know that you're looking to purchase a very specific program, which is great. I um, hope that helps. Campus Legal answered that. Mamed, hey coach, just told you. Up, to, uh, Mamed, Mamed, I'm sorry, that was you. That was you, Mamed. Um, Ali is next. Ali, yo, coach, what's up? Quick question: Any type of test I could perform to find out weak muscle? For example, chest or shoulders, push or pull. Same with legs. So, quick question: Any type of test I could perform to find out weak muscles? Man, you could get super expensive. You could go call Dr. Andy Galpin, and. uh Go on and, and and pay him some some big bucks so he can he can test you. Um, but in general, it's, it's good to videotape yourself. You know, videotape yourself doing the primary lifts and do like a, you know five rep sets. So not not a, a one rep max. Do like a five rep, eight rep max, um, and use technically proficient form and see what happens. Videotape yourself and and just get a good idea of of where your sticking points are. Um, be aware. And this I don't know what level context matters. Are you a novice, beginner, intermediate? advanced elite trainee where do you fall into that spectrum that matters also because sometimes we're just weak it's not yeah i don't have to worry about the imbalance um as much as just getting your total body stronger brandon for strength how does body fat help with strength i you were 280 most strength athletes are higher body fat wondering what's the reason um i think part of it's being in, in a hypercaloric state you're constantly putting you know fuel into the engine and a lot of it does just stored and stayed i think that matters i think the the circumference um of your body mass let's say waist um, the waist is is very is helpful in the bottom of a squat or deadlift because you have the compression of of the waist and it's very important to know your core to activate and challenge and stabilize your core through these primary lifts but having a big core big waist to press into your your big thighs and hips and all that mass just crashing into each other forms as a springboard allowing you to use bigger weights allowing your muscles to adapt at a much higher rate right so just it's 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 the 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 the, the spinning cycle keeps feeding itself um, there's also thought about the, the, um, volumization of muscles and even 
ligaments and, and soft tissue, I should say the, the soft tissue volumization, um, allowing for greater leverage points and, and uh, higher efficiency in, in muscle, muscular uh, contractile ability. You know, that I need to dig my head in, into uh, deeper. Um, but I've heard it bantered around by many of the, the top the top coaches, um, guys like like Louis Simmons has been on that for a, a while, and it, and it seems valid. Um, I just haven't done the, the the deeper you know research on onto the the back end to see what the papers say about it. But that seems to be another part of it. So I, I think it, it's that wide ranging kind of holistic big man big gal um, type of of lifestyle. I think ultimately contextually um, that, that's what adds to it mostly. Is the stretch roller as effective as yoga? I don't know what the stretch roller is for. So um, let me know. How bad is diet soda? I dislike diet soda very much. So and I've been like diet soda is popping up um, recently. And uh, I'll probably, you know, have a I'm going to try and get a couple a couple coaches, a couple guys I, I know and respect. Um, they've kind of come out on the side of like, hey, diet soda is that's good for you. You know, it's not bad for you. Therefore, it's kind of good for you. And that seems to that's that's the way I take it. That seems to be their take on it. Um, and then it, it comes down to like arguing like a few points from a few studies. So I want to try and get some some counterpoints or a respectful discussion with some of the coaches that I do like and I'm friends with some of them. So we can hopefully joke around, and have some fun. But you can see contrary opinions, well validated contrary opinion, opinions being tested. And I think I want to share that with you guys as much as I can through this channel and through our podcast. And uh, so you can make the decision. You know, I'm, I'm just giving you my opinion here, right? That's what this is. I'm giving you my opinion based upon all the experience that I have, all the, the years and the decades and the, the, the practical, you know, testing and, 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 you know, analyzing and collecting of, of the data and the results. That's what I'm sharing here. And there's other perspectives out there. And hey, that's fine. I'm waiting to hear. I'm waiting to hear how theirs is, is, is better. That's what I need to know because that, that'll make me better. So what we're trying to do, what we've always tried to do is we've always tried to drill down into what are the what are the universal truths here when it comes to nutrition, exercise, lifestyle management, um, health, fitness, motivation, even success. But we're talking about the nutrition side right here, hard and heavy. What are the universal truths? Let's let's go back to those. Let's start those. Let's make those our base. Then we'll build out. Diet Coke doesn't enter into that conversation you know we we go back to the the same nutrients that have sustained all of life on this planet since the dawn of time diet coke doesn't really add to that conversation it just adds to like you being like man drinking a diet coke and feeling like i don't know somehow somehow the somehow that's a benefit i don't see how that's a benefit I don't see, and they're like, well, it won't kill you. It's generally recognized as safe up to a certain level. Therefore, it's safe. And I don't get that. I don't get that conversation. And they'll say, well, Dolce, certain foods, you could put that on that same class in that same category. Yeah, don't eat that food. <laughs> don't eat that food. Like, yeah, I, I get that. Um, and how rare and niche is, is that with, with one of these, these pieces of food? And that's what I mean. They, they, they go and they find one like little thing, one line in one study, and they point to that to make it real. But the vast majority of the earth grown nutrients of the food on this planet, man, try, try and overeat it. You're not overeating salad, spinach, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, onions, peppers, mushrooms, zucchinis, carrots, cabbage, um, sunflower seeds, um, you know, mandarin oranges, extra virgin olive oil, um, you know, crushed cashews, you know, sprinkled feta cheese. Like that's something I would eat and do eat. And I'm, I eat that and I'm just like, whew, man. I need a break from food for a while. I'm so full right now. But how many Diet Cokes can people rip through per day? Or real Cokes? Gee, I know people that drink two liters of soda. I know people that go through cases of soda in a day or two. Like cigarette smokers, households that go through cases and cases and cases of soda. <laughs> Mom drinks Diet Coke and so-so drinks slower whatever Coke. And I drink the, the sugar-free Coke. But I drink the real Coke because it's got the real sugar in it. Right. These are conversations people have. These are lifestyles, lives that people live. 
that's contrary to to what we do and what I even understand. I don't understand that stuff. Um, blah 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 blah. Barry Hall, Mike, two questions for you. One, eating before bed, eating before or after working out at night time. And number two, what's your opinion of napping after meals? Um, so question number one, eating before or after working out both. You got to eat before and after you work out. What's up, man? What's up, gal? Who was that? Gary, I'm assuming. Don't assume. Um, but both, you know, anywhere between like, I don't know, 30 to I played, you know, 30 minutes to 90 minutes before a workout uh, with specific kind of type of, of foods, more carbohydrate dense foods. And we could talk about um, nutrient timing pre-workout. Based upon energy system recruitment, there's good science out there that shows if you eat more fats or only fats within a certain period of time before a more aerobic workout, your body will be more prone to burn fat during that workout. You eat more, you know, carbohydrate before the same workout. You change no variables other than the the ingestion of the meal, same calories. Your body will be more prone to burning glucose or stored glycogen during that same workout. Interesting. So there's a lot of context here. And I, I keep saying that on purpose so you guys can just think a little deeper past the superficial answer that I give. Um, and then afterwards, of course, but what about intra? What about during the workout? That's There's good science that supports intra-workout nutrition. I lean towards an amino acid. You know, influx of amino acids during training. There's good science on that. It's not necessary for everyone. And, and again, when, when we talk about, I, I want to be clear here, when we talk about use of supplements, I'm talking about like, I'm talking to 10% of you guys. 10% of the people, 10% of the time need supplements. Like these, these sports specific supplements. Rarely are you going to have a protein or amino acid deficiency when you're eating a diet of, of earth grown foods. Until you get to like 90% of where you want to be and then you want to do that CrossFit competition or you, you're going to go on the, the hike or you want to get into the little bikini or you're going to do the photo shoot or whatever it is. That's like the last 10%, the peaking phase. That's where a whey protein isolate can be effective. That's where a creatine monohydrate can be effective. That's where a, a, a Yohimbine HCL, though I'm not a fan and don't suggest it, that's where that could be effective. Products like those could be effective. Three cups of, of green tea per day. And, you know, we could get a little deeper into that. That falls into this category. But within that category, it is very effective. It's very effective because you're getting the lowest possible caloric load and the maximum amount of amino acids, of essential amino acids, right? That's really what it is. At a time where your body is in need and hypersensitive to absorb it and utilize for muscle protein synthesis. That makes good sense but we're talking 20 grams, maybe, you know, 20 to 40, depending on body size and workout type a few times per week for a few weeks out of the year. Um, that's, that's the true stance. And some people a little more, some people way less. Um, hope that answers. And what's your opinion of napping after meals? Is it bad? Nah, no, it's not bad, but you're going to get, you get a little chubby. Um, that's what I do when I try to gain. That's what I tell everybody to do when they're trying to gain, um, get those little naps, cat naps. in. if you don't have to stand, sit, if you don't have to sit, lay, if you don't have to lay sleep, that's the rule of gaining weight, right? That's the rule. So Tom Snyder, um, I'm fairly newly diagnosed with Graves disease. Any advice for someone with a low endurance level to get lean? Um, Tom, I appreciate you reaching out. Thank you. You do have a condition that would require a medical oversight. So I'm assuming you are under a doctor's care. It sounds like you are. And my next suggestion would be to work with one of our registered dietitians who can give you contextually much more valuable advice than I could give you here talking, you know, blindly without knowing you or your specific situation. I think that's the, the most honest and, and accurate information to help you start moving forward. You should be working with a registered, whether it's one of our registered dietitians or whether it's a, another one, that, that's fine. But a registered dietitian with a proven history of helping people like you, people that are trying to achieve specific goals. Um, so you don't go to a, a hospice or a dietitian that works at a hospice center when you're trying to compete in the UFC. They just don't have the experience base to get you there. You go and find a registered dietitian that works with 
combat athletes, weight class athletes, college athletes, some sort of athlete before you go all the way down that. So, Tom, that's my answer. Um, and if you need anything, just shoot me a DM or shoot us an email to support at the Dolce Diet.com. We can help you find, connect you with one of our registered dietitians or help you find one possibly in your area. Mamad, after four weeks of UFC fit, I feel a little pain in my knees and it makes a sound when I sit and stand. Should I meet a doc or am I just doing my lunges and squats wrong? Um, I would say possibly both. Go to a doctor, get an, an evaluation. Everybody here, call your doctor, get a medical, a medical evaluation, see where you are, get a wellness test, get a health test, get your physical done, get your blood work done. Become friends with your doctor and see them at least every six months, even when you're extremely healthy. Go let your doctor tell you how healthy you are. That's very important. If you have an a, a, a injury, something that's, that's screaming at you, hello, notice me, I'm going to interrupt your entire day, make you think about me. Yeah, go to your doctor, get that checked out, especially knees, back, neck, get that checked out. Knees, back, neck, check, get that checked out. Hands, elbows, shoulders, that's important. Knees, back, and neck, that's 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 your cage um and then that being said you could be doing um um things wrong yeah that's possible now i haven't seen you so i can't give um very uh a clear instruction but what i can say in the ufc fit videos look to my right your left so it'll be screen left it'll be the blonde um athlete named heather she is the modifier so looking at heather she shows you the way to perform these exercises a step or two down from what I'm doing. And if you look around the room, you'll see some of the athletes going at a higher level, try and keep up with some of those. Um, maybe it's, it's Jersey or maybe it's Coco or maybe it's Mike Wade, or, you know, depending on who that person is. That's the great thing about the UFC fit workout. Someone is there at your level, but Heather brings it all the way down, all the way down. It's amazing how we were able to modify that for that um, for you guys. That would be an option. Just take some time off. Be careful. Do no harm is the first rule. Me neither. When you are measuring food by cups, for example, rice, do you measure it cooked? I don't measure it cooked. Always cooked. It's just easy. Cooked goes on my plate. That's easy for me. Omar, alcohol is drinking bad? Yes. If you were to drink, what would you eat before or after? Nothing. Because I wouldn't do it. So there. Me neither. Why do you recommend drinking so much? Well, it looks like too much water. What would be too much water? I don't understand that. Um, what, what? I don't know. What's too much water? Explain that to me. Please explain too much water to me. And then explain too much oxygen and too much money and too much sex to me. Uh, Mike, Kim, Mike, do you have a diet for people with gout? We work with people with gout. Again, that would be with one of our registered dietitians. So you can go to dolcedietshop.com and you click on the one-on-one -on -one or the eight-week My Diet program. You can have a one-on-one 30-minute -on -one consultation with one of our registered dietitians who will review your complete intake form, background history, goals, and such before the phone call. And then we'll go over every point with you. That's um, our 30-minute consult. Or we have an eight-week My Diet program program you work one-on-one -on -one with a registered dietitian who builds you the perfect diet program every meal every recipe every ingredient grocery list specific to you and all of your background and you have the support and, and the the skype calls or the phone calls or the facetimes or the you know emails back and forth or the text messages or whatever it is so they can get you and build you and walk with you and help you troubleshoot problems in real time that's that's one of the beauties of the service not just working with a highly qualified registered dietitian who's seen there seen it all done it all and achieved it all they actually can help you in real time uh, you got called out of work or your, your kids got sick so you can't have the dinner that you're supposed to have or plain you got to go out of town for whatever reason or should i get white or black quinoa i'm confused all that is just easily answered for you. Um, I hope that helps. And that's for anybody who who has that, that higher level need. They want to have that type of direct interaction and, and support to work with a registered dietitian. Um, it's important. Um, but Groen has heard from a very reliable source in Sweden who has pretty strict rules with food. He told me that organic food many times is just labeled just that, but with no checkups if they are really organic. Gronus, and that's exactly what I said in the beginning of this. Having the logo is not, that's not the end-all and be-all. What, 
what the end all and be all to me is the actual truth. Is it organic? Was it organic? Is it raised naturally, unmolested by man and all the toxic chemicals and all the greed and all the garbage? Is this the same basic food that would thrive in this location if no man ever walked in? Just season after season, it continues to grow naturally, healthily from the natural soil with the rain and the sun and all the, the other things in the eco ecosystem that are, that are happening. That's our, our definition. And unfortunately, your friend probably doesn't know because they're parroting information they heard from somebody who got it from somebody who got it from somebody who touts himself as an expert. They're getting too far away from the context of eating real food, people. Stop getting so, no, but the, the broccoli that's here 400 years ago was, was, was cross-pollinated with however the story goes. So you do your best with what you have, and that's why we say geographically available. You eat real food as local to the point of consumption as possible. I want to get my bananas from my backyard. And if I have to, I'll get them from Florida. But if I really, really have to, then, then I'll get them from Mexico or Ecuador or Costa Rica. But I'm trying to get them in my backyard. And the farther I go down that chain, the less nutritious the food becomes. Contextually, guys and gals, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we teach. This is the essence of all your success. Of all your success, this is the essence of it. To just understand nutrition and lifestyle in, in that manner. Which is why I sound like I'm a hating on keto. Dolce's hating on fasting. Dolce's hating on this. I'm not. I'm just like, why? You're missing the biggest picture. Uh-oh. Phone rings. What's the rule? When the wife calls, you answer the phone. That is the rule. Hello, wife. Is it emergency call me or just a uh, I love you call me? Oh, okay. I'll call you. Okay. Bye. So there you go. That's the rule, guys and gals. When your significant other calls, you answer the phone. I don't care what you're doing. You answer the phone. You answer the phone. You're not too cool to answer the phone. You answer the phone. Um, all right, let, let me try and answer some of these questions. Rapid fire now, rapid fire, because there's a bunch of questions. Let's see if I can get through them all. All right, here we go. B -b 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 Boy, shots. Hey, what's up? Me neither. How good are frozen vegetables? So, so, go back to fresh. Um, Randy, what's your opinion on doing a 210 burpee workout three days a week between the three full dot? 210 burpees in a go? I think that's fine. I think that's great. I think that's awesome. Good for you. Marilyn, what's up, Coach Marilyn Dixon? What's up? Good to see you. Christian, yes, sir. Very much appreciate. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Mike, please talk flu shots with Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I would absolutely love to. What's her stance on it? If someone could give me the cliff notes, please. Naeem, hey, Mike, I have big muscles and abs, but for some reason, my thighs are large. Um, how do I lose fat there? And also, how do I make my arms look more defined? Fat is typically a total body thing. So you need to be losing fat all around your body. Yes, it will help to train the area specifically you're looking to improve. And that sounds like your thighs. You should be training and sculpting and shaping that area, adding um, greater blood flow and, and, and nutrient delivery um, capacity inside that area, the area to bring oxygen to that area, the area to remove wastes from that area. So you should be working on that training that area specifically as a, a total body pursuit. Um, me neither. How to make nuts tasty. Uh, I don't really like the taste of raw nuts. A little bit of sea salt goes a long way. Some people like pepper on those. Sometimes I'll drizzle a little bit. I'll roast them with a little bit of honey. Ooh la la. Um, and I'll throw them in my salads. Thor, weight gainer shake's not good. No. Nino, what's your opinion on recomping with healthy foods and training three days a week to build muscle? I think that's perfect. We do that as a part of our Living Lean program. Q-tip, what are your thoughts on Dillashaw Cejudo fight? I think it's a great fight. It's an exciting fight. These guys don't like each other, and they're both really good. I'm going to watch that fight. Mike S., mud gut, exactly. Tamil. Hey, Dolce, any tips for staying lean while on vacation and alcohol? Um, I would do a lot, 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 lot of walking. If you're in a hotel, well, I don't know what the safety is, but I'll tell you, what I do is I try and stay at the highest possible floor, and I walk up and down the stairs every time I come in and out of the hotel, even when I have groceries many times. Um, 
that's very helpful just to kick up the the, the extra um, calorie burn to get the extra steps in. Um, it, it's a good little workout too, depending on how the high the stairs are. Um, maybe if you're doing it at the right time, you can you can tax into the the, the, the fat burning system and, and and oxidize some of that stored fuel you, you got sitting around. Um, but also not being a, a idiot when you eat, right? And I wouldn't I wouldn't drink. I would cut the alcohol. You want the answer? I'll give you the answer. Um, Kyle, yo, what's up, Mike? How's your UFC fit coming along? Can't wait for it. Um, it's not actually UFC fit too. It, it's our own, um, follow up to that system that, uh, I, I did create me neither. When counting protein, do you count by grams, pounds, or do you count by grams, pound of body weight or by grams and lean body mass? It, it's uh, what we say is relatively lean. Um, body mass so if, if you're if you, you have abs it's about what your total body weight is you know maybe we would start a little bit less maybe a, a 10 percent or so less of what your body weight is and kind of build from there 15 20 percent depending on what your goals are and what your composition is like what your your specific um type of of, of physical tendencies are but it, it's pretty easy. It, it starts at about a pound per gram, um, uh, one gram per pound of relatively lean body mass. What does that mean? If you weigh about 200 pounds at like 10% body fat, you need about 200 grams of protein per day, but kick it down, you know, 20% or so. And, uh, you know, that's somewhere 160, 180, you're kind of starting around that area and then slowly you build or not, you know, we don't want to eat too much. Let's, let's give ourselves place to, to grow into. That's what we like. You know, you don't want to uh, dirty bulk and get fat. You want to have lean gains. Hey Mike, I know this is a stupid question, but I love raisins. Are they okay or best avoided? Thanks dude. Ben, they're awesome. We have them all the time. You have them in your breakfast bowl. You have them in your salad. Um, sometimes you have them in uh, what we call ants on a log, which is celery sticks with, with peanut butter kind of sliped in the middle and raisins drizzled on top. It's delicious, delicious, crunchy, salty, sweet, um, mama coach, please don't forget next strength video. Got it. Kyle cutting out alcohol in the UK is almost impossible. It's just so ingrained into the culture. It's everywhere. And you outcast yourself. If you don't partake, I'm an outcast, baby. I'm an outcast, baby. That's right. I'm an outcast. I never got kicked out of a party in the UK. I get invited to all the parties when I go to the UK. Why is that? Hmm. Why is that? Don't worry about them. Let them, let them do your thing. Don't make a big deal about it. Just go and do you be you drink the water, you know, and act like you're, if, if I said, listen, I'm going to pay you a million dollars at the end of the year. If you don't have a sip of alcohol, go out, have fun, do your thing. Don't poison your body. I'll give you a million dollars at the end of the year. If I did that, you would do that. Of course you would do that. Nobody would kick you out. I'd be the coolest thing ever. What's more important, a million dollars or your health? Right? What could, you, what could you achieve in a year's time if you got all of that out of your head? Like, really, if you got all the excuses, all the obstacles, all the self-limiting BS, if you got all of that out of your way and you said, you know, I'm going to buckle down for this year as if I'm going to get a check for $1 million, if I just do what I'm supposed to do, I get it done, I get the job done, I eat what I'm supposed to eat, I exercise when I'm supposed to exercise, I have fun and laugh when I'm supposed to go out and have fun and laugh, I go to sleep when I'm supposed to go to sleep, I do my work when I'm supposed to do my work, I hang out with my family when I'm supposed to be with my family, how different would life be? Right? Why can't you do just do that? Just do that. Why can't you do that? Just do that. How about that? Give me a million dollars, please. I'll do that. Shit. Paul, does white isolate powder lose nutritional properties at high heat? Yes. Um, such as adding it to the Dolce breakfast bowl. No, not in, in that. I wouldn't mix it into the boil, though. Um, I would mix it in once the 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 breakfast bowl is, is already made and mixed. But no, we're talking about like high heat pasteurization, yes. Shane, thanks, Coach, for always taking the time to answer our questions. Have a good weekend. Shane, I appreciate that. Thank you. My man, can we translate your books and publish them? Um, not legally. You would actually have to talk to our publisher and our attorney um, before that. So we're open if, if, if that's something that could be handled from a distribution standpoint. But I don't know if you're talking about that. You work for Pirate Bay. How dare you? Um, blimey, Maynard. I want to try three weeks of shredded, but funds are low right now. We'll get that money together. Get that money together. What you doing? Make a goal, man. Make a goal. Glide, man, gal, whatever. It's so weird. Got to be careful, right? Got to be careful these days. Person, human, I'm assuming. Um, but get it together. It's it's not that expensive. Go download the Kindle right now for $9. Right? Go, if, go do that if that's what you need to do. Go do that. Listen to these podcasts as much as you can for free. Um, and then when you're ready, you want to get the personalized stuff, then go to the dolcediet.com. Get the four-week personalized, three weeks to shred it online program or the 12-week. 
Um, but that's there when you need it. It's there when you're ready. Don't stretch your house, but get that money together. I'd say get double the price. Before you buy it, get double the price and put half in the bank. Half to buy the product and half to, half in the bank. That's that's my coaching tip to you. Do that. Boom, I just gave you free coaching right there. Um, Ali, you got it. Kelly, explain the effects of alcohol on the body. Um, good Google search. I'm not Dr. Google for you. Um, that's nuts. Diet soda is just chemicals and artificial flavor. It might not be super bad, but it can't be good. Gross, exactly. Ben, do you still lose sodium through exercise even if you don't sweat? Rephrase, please. Um, Flemish, keep on grinding, bro. You are strong. I appreciate that. Kelly, thank you for doing what you do. You have made my life better. Um, I'm no longer living in the bro sides. I had been Kelly. I appreciate that. Me too. But it's good to be in bro science for a while. Dorian Yates was a bro scientist, right? Seven times Mr. Olympia. Lee Haney was a bro scientist. Phil Heath is a bro scientist. All of them are bro scientists. Look what they do. Many athletes. Bro science, It's there's lots of practical application in, in the bro world. You have to make sure your mind is open to the evidence-based side also. Um, Dixon's in the house. Hell yeah. What's up, Lamont? Good to see you. Good to see you, Marilyn. Coaches, the Dixon coaches um, in the house. Malik Dobson, on the basis of BCAs, I use BCA plus CLA blend supplement. It's called Performix. Um, I definitely believe in taking uh, taking it, but it is, is it the ideal brand? Honest thoughts, please. I don't know anything about the brand. I don't know anything about the blend. And I'm going to tell you, Malik, I think that's a waste of time and money. How about this? How about instead of spending the money you spend on that, just send it to me. Just send it to me instead, because honestly, I think I do much more for you and for your benefits and for your gains than what this BCAA CLA blended product is doing for you. That's likely doing absolutely nothing for you other than a strong placebo effect. And I don't say this to hurt your feelings. I don't say this for any other reason other than to care for you and try and get you moving forward. I would wager that you would make better gains if you cut that out completely and you added whatever the equivalent protein content is of the BCAAs and you put that into a, 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 a two ounce, one ounce, it's probably like a one ounce piece of wild caught salmon, a piece of sushi. Um, that's the equivalent that it's adding to you for such an excessive amount of money. Likely, and I don't know, but possibly that that niche has you know, loves the synthetic chemicals. So now you have a whole contradictory environment that you might be creating. Wally, how's it, Mike, from 808? How would you structure someone's BJJ physical training when two to three months out? Uh, how would you structure someone's JITS physical training when it's two to three months out? I don't understand that. How, how's, how would you structure someone's BJJ physical training Oh, when it's two to three months out from a, a fight, I'm assuming, right? Um, Spar, because I see the, the rest of here. My apologies. Aloha. Um, so, Wally, you know, two weeks out or so, it's, it's really about the mastery of your craft. Strength and conditioning is there to keep you healthy and keep you performing. But strength and condition, it's, it's definitely helpful definitely helpful. And there's lots that can be done, but most of your time and energy should be put into the, the proficiency that you will need from a skill set perspective and defending yourself and maintaining your, your posture and your awareness and your ability to um, deliver the, 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 the attacks that are, that are necessary uh, within your, your, your craft. And the strength and conditioning is there to assist that, to keep you healthy and fast and fluid and elastic and, and, and adaptable and, and mobile and strong. Um, that's there. So I would say, you know, twice a week, typically during training camp, twice a week is strength and conditioning twice every eight days. You know, that's, that's pretty, a pretty good mix. And I'm a strength guy. Um, a couple more guys. There's a lot more questions. I don't know if I can answer every one. So I do apologize here. We're almost at, at an hour. Um, bum, 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 bum. So I'm going to, I'm going to run through a couple of these just as I see them. And what's the best food to remove plaque and calcium deposits from the arteries? Well, Mike Lee, I'm not going to say there's any specific food. It's the lifestyle. It's the overall lifestyle. And there's lots of things that can be done, but foods that I like, and that seem to be, well, this is not medical advice. This is for information purposes only. 
um, be under your doctor's care if you feel that you have any sort of, of health issue, of course. But high fiber foods are well linked to um, lowering blood pressure, removing um, LD, lowering LDL, um, on the bad cholesterol, you know, general healthy lifestyle. You know, I just had my own um, calcium score done and I had a zero, which is the lowest, the best possible grade that you can get. I think it's, it's more of a lifestyle, right? That That's really the biggest thing. It, it's not just what one food can I eat? It's not one food. It's the entire lifestyle. It's what hundred foods, what 300 foods do you eat? And then what dozen foods do you not eat as much as you would freaking love to eat them, but you don't eat those. That's what it's about. Um, Naeem says, respect you for, I, I respect you for your knowledge on health and fitness. Well, thank you. I'm trying to trying to help you guys red star thunder what do i need to eat to add three feet to my nine foot jump for my flying tornado kicks um what do i need to eat that's a tough one probably uh have you heard of the ghost pepper I, i've heard anecdotally i've heard that will add three feet to your jump now be careful because it might be a little hot um my people need to take the Lamont says, hey, people need to take the Dolce coaching class. There's so much more to what Mike is saying to y'all. Um, Dolce diet doesn't work. If you're not 100% committed, get that mental right, y'all. Hell yeah. Lamont, I appreciate that, my friend. And uh, Lamont and his wife, Marilyn, they both came out. They both became Dolce Diet certified coaches, and they're both highly in demand um, trainers in their own right, um, crushing it out there in the, the, the Midwest. I forget the exact state you guys are in. Um, remind me here. Um, I appreciate that it means a lot because this is there's there's a lot and he's talking about our DDC our Dolce Diet certification um, course it's a three day course our next one is March eighth ninth and tenth um, if you care to to be a part of it I'll I'll promote it down the road um, but it's 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 awesome we go we go deep obviously this is just an hour uh, a one hour you know YouTube Q and A it's we go three days deep um, but but but. Um, Antonio, thoughts on TJ's weight cut? Look great. I'm trying to get Sam, uh, his coach, um, from the training lab on, on the podcast so we can talk about it. But TJ looked great. I spoke with uh, Dwayne Ludwig. We'll check out my new podcast, The Mike Dolce Show. And uh, I have a, a great conversation with Dwayne talking about everything about TJ. Um, Damien, when squats and steak drop in soon, the next couple weeks. That's That should be the title of squats and steak the next couple weeks. Um, Tom Snyder, thoughts on grilling food? Sure, sure. Um. Mike Sullivan, Dolce is the new world order. It's all mind, baby. I, you know, I don't know quite what that means, but it is all in the mind. It's what you choose to do. You know, you're going to be uh, an active participant in your life. You're going to get up there and move and wake up early and, and do the things that you're supposed to do instead of laying in bed or sitting in your chair thinking about the things that you didn't do. That's what it is. Hey, Mike, I read online that TJ Dillashaw did math calculation to lose weight for this fight. Um... Yeah, I you know I'm trying to get his coach on the podcast to have a deeper conversation. So we'll we'll see what they were talking about. But I'm sure it was very you know planned out. They had benchmarks. I'm sure they had to hit, which is mathematical calculation. Wyoming, that's right. The Dixon crew is in Wyoming um, now. Washington State, heck yeah. Josh Lehman, favorite restaurant when traveling? I'd say Whole Foods. You can find Whole Foods in a lot of places uh, around North America, around the country, um, but also around the world. Um, Ben Holland says, Hey, Mike, hurry up and get on Joe Rogan. Well, I'm here. I'm here. Um, Wayne Edwards, what calculation did he use? I don't know. I'll try and get him on the show and talk about it. All right, guys and girls, I think that's enough. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Lots of good stuff, um, in this podcast. If somebody cares to go through and, and timestamp what we talk about at, at each point, that would be awesome. Um, and I'll, I'll pin it to the top and I'll give you a big thank you. If you care to do that, that would be great. I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for checking it out. Um, if you have any additional comments um, or questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll come on back later and over the weekend, I'll try and answer more comments. I'll, I'll, I'll type out answers to you guys. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Click on notifications, I think right there. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you like what we're talking about. If you don't like what, we, what we're talking about, you can give a thumbs down. That's fine. But leave a comment and let me know why. Don't just be the weirdo who puts a thumbs down because you're a, a, a hater. Put a thumbs down and be like, Dolce, you know, this is what I don't like about the channel. That's why I gave you a thumbs down so I can work on it and get better. That's all. I'm not, I'm not mad. I actually take criticism really well. Just don't, don't troll me, though, because I am a much better troll than you. Until next time, boom.